Hey everybody, Jeff Antoniak here. Welcome, thanks for tuning into the Jazz Process video number 12. There's 11 videos that precede this. I uh, hope maybe you'll check them out. They're archived on YouTube. Um, Jeff Antoniak Educator is the channel to check out. And the whole point of these is I have a big gig coming up starting December 8th, 2016, a couple weeks from now. And it's playing Ellington, well it's playing the, uh, the Tchaikovsky Nutcracker Suite. Not the suite, the entire Nutcracker. 25 movements, I think, in the style of Duke Ellington, written by, some of it, of course, by Duke Ellington, the majority by Paul Murtha, good friend of mine, great writer. So anyway, I'm playing alto, tenor, baritone on these gigs, and I've got tons of music to learn, but also lots of uh, philosophical questions to answer as to how I'm going to prepare the music, things I haven't prepared in a long time, and I'm just sort of talking out loud on these videos uh, certainly, if this is of any use to you in your teaching and your learning and your own study, that's fabulous. I love getting input. If you have any thoughts on the stuff I'm talking about, the way you do things, etc., etc., I'd love to hear it. Thanks for the comments. So today, I'm, uh, I was thinking, practicing a little bit and thinking about Johnny Hodges, who of course was the great lead alto player with Duke Ellington, and all the amazing stylistic elements he had in his playing. I don't, I don't think there was a greater stylist on any instrument ever. I mean, I'll go that far. Johnny Hodges was astounding, the kind of stuff he could do. Um, you know, something as simple as his vibrato. So of course, saxophonists all over the world use vibrato on every note they play. I'm not one of those guys. When I was at North Texas 25 years ago, and playing in all the, the lab bands, the big bands. I was trying to do Marshall Royal when I was playing lead alto, as if I were in the Basie Band or Johnny Hodges. This is some stuff I've worked on, uh, you know, in a while. And Hodges had this very pronounced vibrato. And it's interesting, you know, when I get the vibrato where I think I like it, and sounds a little Hodges-like to me, I notice I'm flat on the tuner. So I'm having to get that big, thick, wide vibrato, but vibrato, by definition, is going flat, right? So I have to be careful about the pitch, too. I'm not playing with sort of a loose Ellington big band. I'm playing with an orchestra that's going to expect intonation. So just using vibrato is a pitch issue. So that's that's something that's uh, that's kind of interesting that I'm thinking about and and, you know, working on that for the first time in a while. Um, you know, another thing that Hodges does that it depends where it falls on the horn. It's tricky. I, I guess I might call it a rip or he does this sort of dramatic, <laughs> that sort of thing where it's sort of a, some sort of scale, chromatic, whatever, glissando up to a target note. <laughs> Those are very cool. Um, and again, where it falls, it's a, it's a lot of technique and it, there's better and worse places where it falls on the instrument. So I'm identifying some places in the music and even in the soloing where I might want to use something like that and, and just getting myself comfortable with it on the horn. Of course, Hodges would do, like I uh, quoted, what's that song? I got it bad and that ain't good. <laughs> where you do these huge glissandos up and then end up being flat. So to me, there's a finger glissando, but then there's this huge bend. And then vibrato at the end. So it's, there's, there's five or six of these stylistic elements together. They're really, really amazing. Um, one other thing that he does a lot that's wonderful is a, to, a bend downwards. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And I think I can bend down maybe a whole step. Just using my jaw. Uh, and of course, different places on the horn that's different. There's a cool thing on, um, on 
Ellington wrote, I guess, six or seven of these 25 movements in his Nutcracker Suite. So I've been checking out, of course, how Johnny Hodges is playing some of those movements. And he does this cool, he's in the key of E major, and a bend from a G sharp down to E. It just sounds perfectly fluid. And I think what he's doing is, you know, hitting the G sharp, bending as far down as his armature will take him, which is a whole lot with Johnny Hodges, and then snapping right back to the E in tune. And the illusion that it's just this very, very smooth thing. So, of course, that implies that you know where in tune is, that you can be as far out of tune as possible on the saxophone on one note and then snap back into tune on the next. There's so much going on. <laughs> Fun stuff. And, of course, this isn't the way I play. When I say, of course, this is a very stylistic, specific... Most people would know this is Johnny Hodges. Most people's mind would go to 1920 or 30 or 40 or something like this. So when I'm playing my Jeff Antonia gigs, I'm playing in a more modern style, less or no vibrato, a straighter sound, etc., etc. But this is a blast to be working on, just because I worked so hard on this 25 years ago that I really had it down. So it's fun to be revisiting it, and uh, it's cool to just be messing with all that flexibility that's in the saxophone. And of course, uh, it's kind of like uh, Darth Vader and, and Luke Skywalker, I guess, that you need to use these powers for good and not evil, because man, you can uh, mess things up pretty seriously with this stuff. But it's fun to practice. I'm having a good time working on it. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, as I said, I hope these videos are fun and valuable and start a conversation. I'd love to hear what you think. And um, if you'd like to check out the previous 11 videos, they're all on different topics. Uh, some of it is, you know, how I'm practicing things. Some of it is improvisation. Some of it is melodic playing. All, all sorts of different topics and just things that I'm thinking through as I'm getting ready for this gig. So thanks again for tuning in. And uh, if you want to go to YouTube, Jeff Antoniak Educator is the channel and you can find everything archived there. And thank you for sharing this. Thank you for subscribing on YouTube. See you next time.